All right, this is my third Roach video. And this is gonna be just an overview. We've, I've done two other videos, you know, just talking about aspects of roaches. So some of the things you wanna consider, you need space and, you know, enough space for, uh, for the roaches to spread out and really, you know, produce. If you put it in a very small place, don't expect a lot of production. Uh, generally, you also, when you first set up your colony, you need to be willing to give it time to uh, basically, you know, substantiate itself and start producing. And you'll have some colonies that just can take off crazy and other ones slower. So it also depends what roach is. You know, you gotta target what it is you're feeding. The industry standard is, you know, often dubias. These are uh, really easy to manage, easy to control. They don't become nuisances. This is a new colony, so there's a lobster in there, but you know, dubious. If I don't crowd them too much, they can coexist. But if uh, if I allow the lobsters to basically run out of control, they'll over, you know, compensate or over dominate the area and basically make it so there's no room for anything else. And uh, they'll also irritate the other roaches. So a couple things to consider. So you're feeding your roaches, you keep them clean, you keep them dry. You don't want to have a lot of mold or any anything like that. And maybe a couple times a year you can actually empty the whole container. So you shift all these egg crates to another one. Actually, periodically I'll add new egg crates and remove old ones. But at some point you want to clean the whole bin. So you want to remove everything from here, clean it out, start with an empty new bin, put your things back, you know, manage cleanliness. Cleanliness is important. Uh, don't make it dank and wet, mold, uh, fungus, any, any kind of overall wet things and having like rotted Oranges and or, you know, organic material is bad. So you don't really want that. You want to keep these guys clean. So whatever you put in, you want them to basically eat it within, you know, 24, 48 hours. Uh, so if you are feeding these things like Cheerios, potatoes, uh, you know, starchy things that are just, you know, carbs and stuff like that, you're basically, you're giving them something that's better than nothing, but you need to give them better quality foods and generally uh, fruits are great. And then, uh, you know, I use my Missouri tortoise diet because it's already, you know, pre-designed to give uh, herbivores, you know, a complete diet along with, you know, fruit, fruits and veggies if applicable. But if you feed your roaches crap, don't go and feed those to your animals because essentially you're then giving this uh, nutrient deprived food item and you're kind of defeating the whole thing. So what you put into your roaches, be conscientious and you'll end up with uh, you know really good you know feeder insects. I always recommend starting with you know as many bins as you can possibly manage. You have to give it time in the very beginning. Set them up. Don't take a lot from them. Let that colony thrive. Get some adults in there. Uh, another thing, make sure. So if you notice my lids, my lids are designed where I can still have access to the roach through the cloud of fruit flies and get access to it and also allow ventilation, but you need to, you know, let's say you were gonna put this out in some like, you know, barn or, or whatever. If this is getting visited by, let's say deer mice, deer mice are gonna come in there and they're gonna eat your roaches because they're, you know, they're opportunistic and they're omnivores. So if you have a, a, a deer mouse visiting this, it's gonna come here and it's gonna defecate, it's gonna urinate. When it defecates, it's quite likely that the pinworms and the associated uh, parasites of the mice is now gonna be you know, directly involved in your, your insect production. That's a real bad thing. I want, one of the aspects of doing these roach colonies is to have nice, clean, clean quality uh, insects. So you wanna basically make sure you manage it in an area that's not visited by a lot of mice because you know, their parasites can es essentially get passed on to your, your reptiles and uh, it's not a good idea. It's one of the problems I don't like about crickets. Crickets are often you know, loaded with uh, amoeba, protozoa and stuff like that. And sometimes that can you know, translate into your, your animals. Uh, sometimes you may notice you have little nuisance bugs in here. It's certainly fruit flies, carrion humpback flies. You also get these little woolly worms and domestic beetles or whatever you, you call them. Um, and sometimes those guys are just, you know, more of a nuisance and certainly spiders and stuff like that. So you want to basically still manage everything. So hopefully I've covered some aspects of uh, managing feeder insects. But what's really great about these is you can have a lot 
of potential food for your animals in not a great space and it just takes a little bit of time each week i would say you want to get in here and um maybe oranges at least twice yeah oh, not at least but twice a week is quite fair taking them out spraying them down maybe once a week if you do it twice a week sometimes we, we tend to spray a little bit much and we're going to make things wet you don't want these things all soggy you literally want to wet them down and then let it dry out so right now i have everything out i've sprayed them down i've fed them I've basically put a uh, fruit in here and I'm just letting them kind of dry out before I put them away, which will be, you know, hours from now, I will come back here. I'll give them one more spray and then I'll stack them up and I have an air space. So I stack these up. They're not directly on top of each other. So there's an air space and we want ventilation. So even though they are roaches and you might associate them with dirty, grimy things, that's actually not true. And let's certainly uh, differentiate between things like, German roaches and lateralis and stuff like that. These are uh, all really good food items and um, with some care and attention, you can have one really great food source for your uh, insect loving reptiles. And of course, you know, arachnids and, you know, basically spider centipedes, uh, scorpions, all that kind of stuff. Okay, hopefully I gave some people some interesting information, and if I didn't, I'm sorry. Say goodbye.